Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica and I make lifestyle and beauty videos. For today's video, I want to talk through some products that I think are awesome picks for beginners. And thankfully, I think all of them are available at the drugstore. I found the best prices at Target, with the exception of things being on sale at other stores. So I've put together a list of products, one or two from each category of makeup, and I will talk about them in order of application. And I really hope you like this video. If you do, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe to my channel because I will be doing another video on this look here using all of the products that I'm mentioning. So if you wanna see that one, make sure you do hit subscribe and then it'll pop up in uh, maybe a week or so. Like I said, starting with order of application, I'm gonna start with a moisturizer. And most people don't think of moisturizer as a makeup product, but I think it's very important to have in your makeup routine because it's gonna make your skin a lot smoother and your makeup will go on a lot easier. And my pick for moisturizer is the CeraVe CeraVe Moisturizing Cream. This large tub is from Costco, but you can also get it at the drugstore, also available at Target. I'll usually wait about 15 minutes after putting on the, my moisturizer to start my makeup process, just so it has time to set in and it's not too tacky. You still want a little tacky, but you don't want it too tacky. You know what I'm saying? After my moisturizer has set in, I like to use a primer. The primer that I like from the drugstore is the Milani Prime Perfection. It is hydrating and pore minimizing, which I like that part because the pores of my nose are big and I can never get the makeup to stay on my nose. Like even now it's been on for an hour and it's super oily and I'm sure I have other things I need to work on with that. But having a primer does help make my makeup last longer and stay on my face longer. Once I've got my primer on, I will take my Real Techniques sponge. I will get it wet in the sink, so it's a lot bigger than this. And then I will take L'Oreal True Match, if I'm doing a drugstore foundation. My shade is N2, and picking your foundation can be so tricky, especially at the drugstore when you can't test out your colors. And I really like the L'Oreal True Match color selection that they have. They have the neutral colors, that's what the N stands for. Then there's also warm or cool. And I think in a lot of the stores they have on their display questions to help you figure out if you're warm, neutral, neutral or cool. And I like how they recommend how you can pick if you're warm, neutral or cool. They'll say, if you like how gold jewelry looks on your skin, chances are you are a warm tone and if you like how silver looks on your skin chances are you're a cool tone well if you couldn't tell I have gold and I have silver on and I tend to lean towards the gold colors but I do think silver looks just fine on my skin tone so I actually find myself in the neutral zone for foundation and another tip I have is to get more than one so you can either Ulta does buy one get one free or get one half off often um, and some a lot of stores have sales on these. So if you are trying to find the right color foundation, my suggestion is find a store that has a sale on foundation, preferably your L'Oreal if you're going to a drugstore, and pick one or two shades that you think are almost your color. And I say that because you can blend them. You don't have to stick with whatever's in the bottle. And this actually isn't just N2. I've added a darker shade, which I don't remember what I added, but I took some time and sat in natural daylight right next to a window and just played with color tones till I got the actual color that matches my skin well because my biggest pet peeve is when your face is orange or you can see like patchiness on your cheeks and that happens to me and it's because I am using the wrong shade and I have a lot of foundations to pick from so I, that shouldn't happen but sometimes it does. So. The best thing you can do is find a color that really does match your skin tone, including your neck. You don't just want to go with what matches your face, you want to make sure it matches your neck as well. And a lot of it is trial and error, so also find a store that has a good return policy because some stores don't let you return makeup for your money back if it's been open, but I think Ulta, at least last time I returned something there, they said no problem if it's open, we get it, um, and let me return it. After I put my foundation on, I like to go with concealer. My pick from the drugstore is the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. It has good coverage, it's buildable, it doesn't crease too much, and it's a good one from the drugstore. 
Then after my foundation and concealer is on, I will set it with a, usually a translucent face powder. The Milani Prep Set and Go is a good pick. I'll use this concealer brush from Real Techniques. I think it's concealer. Nope, it's a setting brush. How ironic, a setting brush to set my makeup. Good one, Jessica. Anyway, so I'll use the Milani Translucent Powder and the setting brush from Real Techniques. And I'll just lightly tap that on to my skin and then I like the wet and wild brush for setting the powder all over my face this one's a big fluffy brush for a nice cheap price of three or four dollars and it actually does a really nice job applying everything evenly um, so I like this brush next I'll go in with blush one blush you've probably heard of from the drugstore that is pretty universal, most skin colors and tones can wear this, is the Milani Baked Blush in the color Luminoso. A little bit goes a long way, so make sure when you're putting your brush into any blush, really, start light and build up. I like to use the Real Techniques Blush Brush. This is a huge brush for blush. <laughs> Um, and so I'll just do a little bit at a time and make sure I blend it really well. You could also use the e.l.f. blush brush. I think it's a couple bucks cheaper. I would just go very light and just make sure you're blending really well. Sometimes if I think I put too much blush on, I'll go back over with a face brush and make sure it's all just really blended in well. I like subtle blush. I don't like a lot of blush. So I usually try and blend it out pretty good. After I'm done with my blush, I'll go in with a highlighter. And my pick from the drugstore is the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. This is not extremely bold, but it's buildable. Sometimes you don't want a lot of highlighter. And if you want to add more, you just keep building it up. And I use the e.l.f. Small Stipple Brush to do that. If you don't have a stipple brush, another option is a fan brush. There's an e.l.f. fan brush, only a couple bucks, maybe even a dollar. And this can also apply highlighter really well. I like to have two of these on hand so I can have one that is legitimately for brushing away, you know, the dark shadows that you made a mess on your face with. But it's also nice to have one for a highlighter. So you could go with a dark color fan brush for dark shadow and then use a lighter color fan brush as highlighter and then you won't ever mix them up and you don't have to worry about getting dark eyeshadow when you're trying to do highlighter. Next comes the fun part, the eyeshadow. And before I put any eyeshadow on, I will make sure I prime my eyes. From the drugstore, I like the Milani eyeshadow primer and I like the Maybelline Master Prime for primer. I think those are good ones for only a couple bucks. This one might be $3.99. As far as eyeshadow from the drugstore, it was very hard to find one that was a good quality after using things like Urban Decay and MAC and the high-end shadows that I do have because they just don't compare. It's really, <laughs> it's hard to find good ones at the drugstore, but I did find a few. And after some trial and error and some pretty bad ones, I came up with a handful. So my number one pick, I'll save till later. Um, Price-wise, this one is not super budget friendly from the drugstore, but I highly recommend the Sonia Kashuk palette that um, has all neutrals, but there is one with some shimmer, so you could go that route. It is $19.99 at Target. If you're gonna spend money on anything at the drugstore, I would say invest in eyeshadow from the drugstore because it's really hard to learn how to do eyeshadow well if you don't have a good eyeshadow. So this one has three, six, nine, 12 colors. It's got lights, darks, neutrals. It's really good quality. It does blend well. The only thing I don't like about this particular one is there are no shimmers to it, but I found a solution, two solutions. You could either go for the other palette that has similar colors and some shimmers, or Maybelline has these duos that are four shadows, and they're actually pretty good quality themselves, and they're $5. So with your 20 and your five, $25 eyeshadow, and that is a lot of eyeshadow. So that's an option. Another option, Milani for t about $10 has their own little eyeshadow palette and I think these are pretty good quality. The blendability was okay. There's not enough color selection in them though. So I would almost get, I'd probably get two and then I might as well get the Sonia Kashuk one. Um, but I thought these were pretty good quality for drugstore. They're just not the best. 
Now my top pick, I actually avoided buying because I thought I could find something better for cheaper and I couldn't. So I went and I just bought it and it actually is $17.99, which is less than the Sonia Kashuk one. So I don't know why I didn't just buy this one in the first place, but whatever, you live and learn. So anyways, it's the NYX Ultimate Shadow Palette. This palette has 16 colors. It has mattes, it has shimmers, it has lights, it has darks. Let me just open it up for you so you can take a look. It's a good quality. It blends well. That's what I did for my eyes here and I wore it yesterday and this lasted all day long with my primer and my setting spray and all that. But I thought this was a really good quality. I was quite impressed that the drugstore had something this good of quality. I haven't used it that much though, I will say that. So I'll get to know it a little bit more and see how many eye looks I can do with it. But I do really recommend this one and I know I'm gonna start using this one daily now. So should have just bought it in the first place. Next up, let's talk eyeshadow brushes. I think it's really important to have a good blending brush. Now if you can pay a little more and get one from MAC or even just buy one online from Morphe or at Ulta very, very soon. They are going to sell Morphe. I'm so excited. There goes my, all my monies. Um, anyways, but if you can buy one of those, I would recommend doing that because a blending brush is so important to have a good quality one. But I do have a few picks if you can't spend a lot of money on them. My first top recommendation, Sonia Kashuk has a great blending brush. All of their blending brushes are great. All of their brushes are great. If you could buy a whole set of Sonia Kashuk, look for them at half price or clearance at Christmas time, then you are off to a great start. I love all of their brushes. I can't talk enough about them, actually. Anyways, there's also the Wet n Wild blending brush. I think this is, does a great job, and it's nothing amazing, but it's not bad at either. And there's also a brush from e.l.f. that's a blending brush. It's just a couple bucks. And to be honest, I was skeptical about this at first because it's not like a round fluffy brush like you normally go for. It has a flat part to it. So I thought that that would kind of hinder the blending. But it does help when you're in different spots on your eye. Obviously you kind of need a different angle. So having an angled type blending brush can be pretty helpful. I also really like the Real Techniques shading brush. This is good, I find, for shimmers and loose powders, and it's really easy to make your eyeshadow look vibrant with this brush, so I like that one. Then from Sony Kashuk again, girl crush on Sony Kashuk. Um, anyways, <laughs> I like their flat brush for applying shadow to my lid, the inner part of my lid, which you'll see if you watch my next video on how I do my makeup look for all this. As far as applying shadow to your lid, you can use the e.l.f. eyeshadow C brush. This is a good one for that. For darker colors and blending out darker colors in your, the V of your eye, I like the e.l.f. professional blending eye brush. So it's a little bit bigger. And then you have the smaller, sorry, you can't even see this. Nope, no autofocus, sorry. Um, then you have a little bit smaller brush, the e.l.f. Professional Eye Crease Brush. So you have the blending eye brush and the crease brush. These are my pick for applying darker colors on the outer part of your eye if you're going for brushes from the drugstore. I also recommend that you always have a spoolie on hand. There's one from e.l.f. It's like a buck. Super cheap, super easy. I like to brush out my eyelashes before I put mascara on and I'll brush out my eyebrows before I... I always call them eyebrows and not brows. <laughs> I'll brush up my brows before uh, applying product to those too. Next for eyeliner, I like the NYX Waterproof Epic Ink Liner. And I think it's very comparable to the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner. It is a pen and you can't see that. <laughs> but I think for a drugstore price, it's a really good quality. So that's my pick on that. And then for brows, I'm sorry, I'm not good at brows at all. And so I use a brow mascara instead of um, brow wands or anything to draw in my eyebrows. And I like the NYX brow mascara in the color brunette for myself. We're almost done, so just bear with me here. For the next product, I would recommend the Tweezerman Eyelash Curler. I do this before I add mascara to my lashes because once you add the mascara, your eyelashes can stick to this and it can pull them out or damage them and you just don't want that. So do this before your mascara. 
And as far as mascara goes, my recommendation is the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise. I've talked about this in other videos, and I just love this mascara. I think it's very comparable to the Too Faced Better Than Sex, but obviously it is much cheaper, so I, I recommend that from the drugstore. Finally, to finish everything, you want a finishing setting spray. I like the Milani Make It Last spray. It is really good quality. It's about $10 or so, and I think it's a good product for getting your makeup to last a lot longer. Moving on to the lips, my pick for lip liner is the NYX Lip Liner. I like the color Nude Pink. It's very neutral, natural, and pink. I really like the Maybelline lipstick. I think the formula is pretty good, and um, this is my favorite color. It's Nude Lust in 920, and it's just a very soft pink. It's what I'm wearing now. My last product is just adding a lip gloss, and I realized I don't have lip gloss from the drugstore, so I went with, I grabbed an old one that I had from Victoria's Secret, and I'll just put that over my lipstick, and that's about it. So those are all the products that I recommend if you're just starting out with makeup or wanting to try something new with your makeup. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button because I will be putting up a video very soon on this look here using all the products I just talked about. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it a little bit helpful at least. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye! It's the NYX Ultimate Shadow Palette. This has 4, 6, 8, 12, yes I can count. No, I can't count. <laughs> Four, eight. Oh my gosh, 16. This palette has 16 colors.